Hello everyone and welcome to Kerbal Space Program Career Mode with me, Redneck Einstein. Now I'm trying something a little bit different in this video. What you're seeing here is the epic rescue mission of Valentina Kerman. Now entrusted with this is Jebediah Kerman. And also in this video I want to show you a flyby of Minmus where we got loads of science. Now I have speeded up this. Um, hopefully you can follow what I'm doing on the trackball. Uh, if you need to, but basically the mission took quite a while So I thought I'd speed it up and edit it for your convenience and then commentate on it afterwards And hopefully you'll appreciate that uh, this episode as always is brought to you in association With my patreon sponsors Alfred Skips, Dan Peters and Elfwin. Thanks guys I couldn't do this without you. I really couldn't so I appreciate the continued support, and if, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can at www.patreon.com forward slash Redneck Einstein. Now what I've done here is I'm switching over to the rocket where Valentina Kerman is stranded. Now the unfortunate thing is that rocket has absolutely tons of science on it, about 100 science, but we're unable to get it back because we have no docking uh, modules right now on any of our rockets. We haven't unlocked them yet in the science mode. So... You know, what I've done is essentially commandeered Valentina's, you know, uh, rocket that got stuck and uh, EVA'd her so she's managed to escape and now she's flying towards the rescue rocket. Now you remember Valentina got stuck because we didn't have enough fuel to return from our moon landing mission. So hopefully in an upcoming episode I'm going to show you my correct moon landing procedure with enough fuel. But here we go. This this rocket here took loads of fuel simply because this um, little habitat or this little storage vessel, crew vessel where Valentina just entered, is so freaking heavy. You can see the size of it compared to the rest of it. Now what I did here was just be a bit silly with Jebediah. I thought I'd have a little fly around the rocket. Kind of lost control. <laughs> and then had to sort of find my way back. Now, uh, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult controlling these uh, rocket thrusters in space on your Kerbins. So I had a little bit of difficulty, but we got safely back in the rocket. Then, <laughs> there you can see in the background a super speeded up version of Valentina's uh, rocket that's unable to be saved. There we go. So this is all to do with creating the maneuver necessary to get back to Earth. Now, obviously... Once you are on an encounter with Earth, sorry, I say Earth, I mean Kerbin, looks so much like Earth, I'm just being silly really, aren't I? Anyway, uh, even though I've got a maneuver that gets me in towards Kerbin, uh, you still have to be relatively safe uh, and, and plan your entry you know, carefully. and You definitely need a heat shield, so I've got that big heat shield on the front. Now I've had a comment from one of my subscribers saying, why don't I put the heat shield on the back of the craft? I'm not sure how that would work, because surely that would slow down the rocket. I suppose I could create a system where I decouple uh, the rocket thruster and have the heat shield on the back that way. Although I don't really know what difference it would make having it on the front or the back. I suppose you're creating a lot of drag on the front upon launch. But seeing as uh, we're very early on in our uh, space agency, it takes so long... Uh, no, we don't really have much science anyway. Now you can see we're actually landing in the dark, unfortunately. So it looks just a bit uh, bit boring. You can't see too much what's going on. And I had to be really careful because I don't know if I was going to land on a mountain or whatever. In which case, my parachutes might not even have enough time to deploy properly and slow me down. So there's always a risk. I, I tend to prefer to land in the sea because the sea is obviously always at sea level. So you always have time for your parachute to open. But... Because this was a rescue mission, I guess I took a few more risks than normal, which is kind of ironic. You shouldn't really do that. So then I gathered up loads of science. You can see what I unlocked here. Uh, I just having a little search through. I was like, what do I unlock? And I, I wanted to go for these giant kickback engines. But I still hadn't decided. And I was like, hmm, what would I do? I mean, I have 110 science, so I could unlock anything. And then... We switch on to the Minmus flyby. Now you join me most of the way through the mission again because all the launch procedure went smoothly. There's nothing to worry about there. So I thought if I go on a, a Minmus flyby, there's a whole another load of science data we can get. Now I'd already run the um, science experiments, 
So I just wanted to rerun them to show you what I did. So I run the uh, materials observation bay, did a crew report, and uh, did an EVA. So again, I had to redo it just to show you what I did. I wanted to um, make sure that everything was working fine. There we go. And I'm having a li little play around with Jebediah. He's enjoying himself. This guy puts up with a lot. He, I bet he's an alcoholic in real life. Or, you know, outside of his rocketry in the game. But we get another 20 science from that, which uh, is not to be sniffed at. So, you can see this rescue mission, or after the rescue mission, we actually were quite fortunate in, in the sense that um, we went on to do other missions. And we, we had some science that we could carry back and it enabled us to unlock rockets that enabled us to get to this point so I used the um, used this opportunity to gather loads more science so another 20 science from measuring the temperature in outer space obviously outer space is absolute zero isn't it I would think so it's mostly a vacuum well not absolute zero but anyway by doing this mission we achieved one of our contracts which was a superb thing so not only did it give us loads of science we also completed the contract which gave us loads of money but then, obviously, you've got the difficulty of re-entering Kerbin again. Now, I can't say that I've mastered this, but I'm pretty sure um, I'm accurate in saying that what you want to do is approach at a shallow angle in order to maximize your exposure to the atmosphere of Kerbin. So what I mean by that is, essentially, the more atmosphere you fly through, the more slowing down of your rocket you're going to get without worrying about uh, whether your parachutes are going to open. Because obviously, if you go in slow enough, your parachutes are going to open anyway. But uh, because of the gravitational force on Kerbin, it kind of speeds you up on entry. So you can see as I approach Kerbin here, the, uh, the speed we're approaching is quite dramatic. Now, I just wanted to change my orbit here so I could try and land in the light side of of Kerbin. Didn't want to go for the dark side again. It's, it's just way too risky. So uh, it takes a bit of fiddling around. Uh, so I luckily I had excess fuel that I was able to do this with, but I think you want to be a bit more careful. If you're running very tight on fuel and a very efficient operation, which you should be, not like me, brute forcing it and being a complete noob, but it did create a fun thing where we had to rescue Valentina, which is pretty cool. Um, Anyway, yes, yeah, so here we go. We're on the entry now. I kind of lost my track of thought there. So again, I wasn't really sure if that heat shield was enough because you can see the massive uh, heat forces or the heating of the outside of my rocket there. And I'm thinking, is that actually heating, you know, the science bay and all this or, or is that just uh, being dissipated off the front heat shield? You can't really see, in my opinion. Now, something exploded there and I think... What that was, was like uh, one of the, the legs or something. I mean, I don't know. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but something exploded. But thankfully, we're still in complete control of our rocket. And you can see you can see what I mean by trying to um, go through as much atmosphere as you can. So if you, if you plummet straight up, if you go straight up in your rocket and then you plummet straight back down, now the 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 amount of atmosphere you're going through is minimal. So you're going to plow into the ground really fast. So by doing a shallower entry, you are going through more atmosphere. And, and more atmosphere means more slowdown, especially once you get past this heating up uh, aspect. Now here, I wasn't sure. I was thinking, am I going too fast? Am I just going to bounce off of the planet here? Um... But you take a look at the apoapsis and it's decreasing, but I wasn't sure if it's going to decrease enough. I, I really wasn't sure. So it could have messed up my landing. Now, just noticing here, these white mountains here, they, they could be quite cool. I kind of want to do some science experiments near those. I suspect that's a good area to get loads of uh, scientific data. Uh, you can see I'm just burning my rocket ever so, ever so slightly there just to try and maneuver my rocket so it lands roughly in the water as i said i'm not a fan of landing on the on the land because you never quite know what the elevation of it is um so yeah just checking my ab ablator there i'm not sure how to pronounce that word my ablator and uh just to see if it's got enough to keep me cool and it has and then you enter the, sort of the wind uh, the lower atmosphere and, and all the wind and everything creates drag on your rocket, which is good for us because it means there's an opportunity to land safely. 
So as I said, I have edited this video quite heavily just to bring you the important bits. If there's anything that, I, that I've gone too fast over and you want help with, do let me know. And if you want to look at my rockets, let me know that too. I can upload them somewhere and perhaps you could play around with them, whatever you want to do. Um, this part of the, the mission is really gets on my nerves when it goes so slowly down to the um, down to the ground. So I sped that bit up. I was like, bah. and then we land and we're safe. And then all we got to do is recover our vessel, gather all the science that's on it. And Bob's your uncle. You know, Beatrice is your aunt. We get loads of stuff and we got 200 science now to spend at will. So thanks for watching, guys. Please join me on the next episode.